Hi, welcome to Show Studios London Fashion Week Live Review Roundups. I'm Joshua Graham, and today I want to talk about Burberry, Supriya Lele, and Erin Esch. Um, I couldn't really think of a better place to start than Burberry, which is the quintessential British brand that's really long defined British identity. This was the second mainline collection of creative director Daniel Lee following his quite eclectic debut. This show was held at Highbury Fields and again was really this exploration of how we define British identity today. The trench coat, of course, took a starring role in this collection with a lot of the opening looks, kind of his proposition for how that silhouette is going to change and evolve. This time around, it felt very quite square, quite structured, I want to say boxy, which really played in contrast to a lot of the other elements in the collection, which were a lot more rooted in ease and casuality. I think the place that Daniel Lee really is going with Burberry is quite interesting because it's such a departure from what he proposed at Bottega Veneta that I think was a lot edgier and focused on the underground and, and subculture and sensuality, whereas the direction he seems to be going out with Burberry seems to appeal more to kind of the British bourgeois. Um, in this collection we saw a silk scarf print, which I don't think you can get any more bourgeois than that. I immediately think about kind of brands like Hermes and Fendi will always have these garments in shops for their very wealthy clientele to, to easily consume. Of course, Daniel Lee kind of reimagined that it's like a deconstructed version of the equestrian knight armor. At the end of the day, I think all you see is a silk print shirt. But it's that speaking to that bourgeois customer that I think is very interesting in that direction especially with this collection, which saw a kind of collaboration with Norman's, this North London diner slash institution. Burberry as a mega brand will always be about appealing to um, a mass audience to sell product, to sell idea. It's hard not to see it in a gentrification kind of way, taking these kind of working class codes, these working class ideas and, and slapping a, a blue Burberry equestrian logo on it, um, especially with this collection because I thought the clothes felt conservative. There was, again, this real ease. The silhouettes were kind of f these flowing floral print dresses. The trousers were wide leg. How do we define Britishness today? We live in a multicultural society um, that's still very structured by class and race and politics. And I think really my question is, as a mega brand, as a, as a real institution within British fashion, should we be looking at it as a vehicle to push Britishness in a, in a new direction, to push Britishness in a modern direction? Or should we be happy with it kind of carving out its lane as, as this really singular idea of, of what it means to be British today? And I really thought that was a apt starting off point for the other two collections I want to talk about. Which brings me to Supriya Lele, who marked her London Fashion Week return with this show after, I believe, a two-year hiatus. The brand has really garnered her fair share of fans with her signature sexy mini dresses. And this show was no different. It was a real kind of return to form for the designer, with the opening looks being these really slinky, draped, sheer nude garments that I think really left very little to the imagination. But it was done in such a clean and refined way that there was really nothing gratuitous about how she was celebrating the body, the way the drape across the chest and um, midriff kind of clung to the body. It really accentuated curves and, and created this allure that again, I just it didn't feel gratuitous in a way. And this celebration of the body is definitely a trend that I've seen in the shows at London this week from, I guess, streetwear designers like Moa Lola, who had skimpy, barely there baby tees and mini skirts to, to more couture evening wear propositions like Michael Stewart at Standing Ground for Fashion East. It feels like we have the body on our mind and, and how we present it and how we 
show it is something that feels like a conversation fashion is having right now. Um, and Supriya Lele, one of the looks that I really liked was the, was the white vest and the like panties. And it immediately just reminded me of um, Ripley in Ridley Scott's Alien in that one scene at the very end after she finds safety in the spaceship. And it's that act of kind of, it's that ease and that undress that I think is incredibly sexy, kind of references the sari. And while there was a real luxuriousness in the simplicity of this collection, I think there was also a real luxurious quality to the introduction of leather. Um, so Supriya Lele teamed up with Bentley this season to create leather jackets and these leather corset bra tops. And I thought that was incredibly important because it added um, another layer of, of tactility, but also another layer of real, real sex appeal. I think when we think about leather, we think about the kink community, we think about um, the, the feel, the smell. There's something so alluring and sexy about leather. Leather also played a key role in the runway debut by designer Aaron Ash, who held his show at the Tate Modern. The Central St. Martin's MA menswear designer really piqued the interest of the industry in the last couple of years because of his subversive take on menswear. Um, it even landed him a top spot as a finalist of the last LVMH prize. So the collection opened with his first real foray into women's wear, which I'm always quite wary about menswear designers taking on women's wear too fast. Um, I always find it's a business move to reach an audience rather than a brand building move or a real logical next step and design move. But I didn't feel that at all with Aaron Ash. I felt like it was just a natural progression of him and his aesthetic and his refined take on, on modern dress. So the show opened up with this silk slinky number that, like Supriya Lele, really clung to the body in all the right places. And when it moved, there was a real fluid sensuality to it that I definitely want to see fashion move in that direction. I think we live in a post-maximalist world and as annoying as it is, I think quiet luxury as a trend speaks to the ease we want in fashion. I think the art of dressing up has to be toned down a little. Um, we live in such trend-heavy times, whether it's goblin core or ballet core, that when we do see these minimal propositions, these there's something that just feels so incredibly modern about it. And really, what I think what makes Aaron Ash one of the most exciting designers to look at right now is is how he's bridging this world between elegance and refinement and, and tapping into the kind of hedonism and subculture of London. And I think what really makes Aaron Ash one of the most interesting designers today is his ability to take these, these really refined ideas and implement them in a way that's referencing um, street and subculture here in London. There's a real grown-up attitude to the refinement in, in his tailoring but also the irreverence and how he, he styles the pieces is really captivating. And I think it's something that a lot of people in fashion, a lot of people in London are going to relate to. And you see that in how sharp his tailoring is. You see that in, in his attention to detail and how the buttons are covered and how the satin lapels peak in exactly the way they should. Um, and again, this real fluid sensuality and how all these clothes move. And it's really hard not to describe these clothes as, as anything but cool. And I would say that again about Supriya Lele because I think what both designers are doing so well is tapping into these what feel like modern sensibilities of cool, of, of not trying too hard, of, of finding this sexy ease in dressing. Well, that's it for a very sexy London Fashion Week, but make sure to stay tuned because our editor, Hedy Malik, will be reviewing all of the shows in Milan next.